You are Locked On Wolverines, your daily podcast on the Michigan Wolverines, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Oh, man, that was an unexpected two days off. Locked On Wolverines podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. Usually, we're going to do it every day this weekend because I was an idiot. If you missed uh, Tuesday's show, it wasn't that bad. At least it didn't seem like it. Like I told you on Tuesday, I'm like, yeah, on Monday, I tried to carry an entire dining room table into my house on my own like an idiot, and I pulled something in my back, and it was kind of fine that day. It, despite it felt really bad in the moment, but it was kind of like, oh, am I okay? Oh, I seem to be okay. Tuesday, not so much the case. Wednesday, or sorry, Tuesday was, no, was it was still fine. Tuesday night, it tightened up. Wednesday, I couldn't move. Yesterday, I sat, tried to sit down in this chair, and I couldn't do it. So we're back, because I can finally, after lots of rehab, lots of cupping, heating pads, massagers, all of that stuff. We're back. And we're going to do the Michigan mailbag on a Friday like we uh, hate doing, but do every now and again. And then we're going to make up for the uh, the lost shows over the weekend, barring I don't make some other kind of grave mistake and injure myself again. But second worst, uh, second worst uh, back pain or whatever that I've ha- ever had. Second worst time I've ever thrown on my back move this over here a little bit all right so let's go to our leaders and best starting with james crudup at james crudup six fourth and seven with the season on the line what harbaugh era pass catcher are you throwing to i'll give you several in order of i think what i would where i would select them i'd go nico collins number one i think he was probably the most sure-handed receiver big bodied receiver he's a guy that you obviously want to go to I'll go Amara Darbo, number two. Just solid possession receiver. Don't really remember many drops on his end. Number three, I'm going to go Kakoa Crawford. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not doing that. (laughs) That's mean. Number three, I'll go Ronnie Bell, even though he did drop a fourth down catch in the... uh, It it, it was kind of that scenario, right, in 2019 at Penn State. But Ronnie Bell, I think, for the most part, would be that guy I'd go to next. Um, and then everyone beyond that is we'll find out. I I still think that they have guys like Darius Clemens and Tyler Morris that could really be those guys. I wish I could say Donovan Peoples Jones or Tariq Black, but Tariq wasn't the same after his injury. Donovan had his moments, but was just, you think to the 2019 Ohio state game, how many passes did he drop in that game? Josh Barra, Jadiki, Blake is an early Heisman favorite, but between JJ continuing to grow and probably a higher workload for Edwards, does anyone on Michigan's offense have a real shot at the award? And if you had to pick a favorite from the team, who is it? It would still be Blake Corum. Yes, Donovan Edwards might end up seeing a lot more time. I still, I wouldn't be surprised, though, if Blake Corum just got that much better, right? And also, it, it, sometimes the award can be a cumulative award. Not always. Trevor Lawrence never won it, and it's just kind of ridiculous when you think about it. Uh, but uh, it sometimes is like it can be a cumulative award. Uh, and so I, I wouldn't be surprised if he did, but I think he would probably go Blake Corum, then JJ. And then, I mean, Donovan Edwards would have to really come on if Blake is on his game, right? But it could be any of those three. And heck, I mean, it could be Will Johnson. <laughs> if Will Johnson is just insane and decides wearing the number two jersey means exactly that. My brother in metal, Michael Wolf at M Wolf Twenty One. What does it say about Michigan culture that Jordan Marshall is recruiting Taylor Tatum? Is Tuck still coming? What's his ETA? Uh, I heard from Blake Corum that Tuck uh, said he was coming. All he saw was him running. Uh, um, Jordan Marshall re- re- recruiting Taylor Tatum. I mean, it's kind of like the the Blake and Donovan relationship, and it it's pretty big, right? Like. And especially the fact that it's culture without him actually being on campus. And it's a recognition of, you know, we're all going to get to eat. You know, it, it's kind of reminiscent of what you've seen with Ohio State, especially with wide receivers, right? They get these five-star wide receivers ad nauseum, and you're like, how are they going to continue doing this? And yet they keep doing it. So I think that Michigan at running back maybe could be getting there. It's not there yet, right? Because, I mean, the Ohio State receivers – being first round draft picks has been a long time thing. Michigan's had 
one running back selected since Mike Hart, and it is uh, and it's Hassan Haskins in what the fifth or sixth round or whatever it was. Jimmy Whitner at Jimmy Whitner one. What's the position uh, that are still needed from the portal? Uh, I, I mean, if you can get a good corner, I was I had my eyes on a Morian Walker. Sorry, not Morian Walker. That's a guy that Michigan already has. A Morian Cooper who uh, was a strong flip candidate from Florida State to Michigan. He put himself in the transfer portal. He ended up committing to uh, Colorado, which in a way surprised me. But I guess if you're a cornerback, you want to play for Deion Sanders if you get that opportunity. Uh, but I'm keeping my eye on corner. Obviously, they brought in two kickers. Uh, they're in discussions with Tywon Malone, defensive tackle, who played for, uh, who, who was a strong, a strongly considered Michigan. Then Chris Partridge went to Ole Miss. He ended up going to Ole Miss, so Michigan's got a feather in its cap there. Um, I think that uh, those would be the ones I'd keep my eye on. And wide receiver. It's, it's kind of disappointing in a way, not that he was ever going to come to Michigan, but that Caleb Brown ended up going to Iowa instead of uh, Michigan because they could really use a five-star type wide receiver. I really wish I could just fix this boom mic. It worked so great at the other place when it wasn't mounted. Every time it's been mounted to this desk, it's like I'm going to fall. Um, anyway... <laughs> Uh, what little used player are you looking forward to seeing most? He's not a little used player, but I'm excited about Roman Wilson if he can stay healthy because that's we've talked about it a lot. Week five always gets injured. Um, other than that, if I had to pick like a little, I mean, everyone's got experience, so it's hard to say like little used player. Whoever ends up being the other cornerback, but I mean, we've seen everybody for the most part, and I would like to see those sophomore wide receivers how they do as well. So basically, the trio just two on one side, and one on the other. And, uh, I mean, we, we can throw in uh, C.J. Stokes if he ends up being able to beat out uh, Benjamin Hall and Kalel Mullings. KRT of Farmer 84, I am back. He finally saw the, since I lost my verification, I've gotten a lot of questions uh, from people being like, when did you post the mailbag? And they're just not seeing it. Uh, what does J.J. need to accomplish this year to garner a first round NFL draft grade? Do you think that will happen? I think it's certainly possible. I mean, number one, Michigan needs to throw the ball a bit more. No games in the 100s. Has to be at least 200 yards a game, if not 250 yards a game. I, I would say he needs to at least eclipse the season record of 3,331, the low bar set by John Navarre in 2003. And this, I say low bar. It's, a, it's literally the high bar. Uh, where was he... Last year, do I have? I had it up on my other computer, and I don't have it up here. But uh, let's see if I can quickly, if I can not mistype here. See where the, uh, what he did last year. Keeping in mind, JJ didn't play every game, or, or he played every game, but he didn't start every game last year. And he had a couple games where he wasn't asked to do a heck of a lot. But he had 2,700 yards last year, averaged... Uh, does this have a uh, one, 194.2 yards per game? I mean, well, let's just do the math. I'm not going to do it in my head because I'm not good at it anymore. Let's say he averages 250 yards a game, 14 games. That's 3,500. Breaks the single season record. He had 340, uh, sorry, 343 yards passing against TCU. That was a single season high for him, or uh, that's a single game high for him, career high. So uh, have a couple of those. You can have a couple around 200. I mean, keeping in mind that like in most of the Jim Harbaugh era, you would expect the guys to at least get 200. And uh, but that wasn't the, hasn't been the case the last couple of years. So uh, I think that it, he'll probably eclipse those numbers. But he has to also have high accuracy and all of that kind of stuff. And Michigan probably has to go undefeated. I don't think they're going to get any breaks. Uh, finishing us out in segment one, Jonathan Joseph at J. Joseph 2156. If Michigan asks you to choose a domestic trip for the team next year, where would you send them? Catalina Island. <laughs> I never went to Catalina Island in my four years in L.A., and then my ex-girlfriend and I were going to go when we were there in 2016. That just didn't happen. Um, I don't know. Some, it's, they did a pretty good job with this last one. I, you know, like, you know, maybe Boston would be on that list. But I mean, the, the thing is, I mean, they only spent a day in New York. I'm still sad I didn't go, but I had a good time doing the draft and not missing any podcasts except for the two that I was injured. So I missed missed two that I was going to maybe miss anyway. Um, it'd be interesting if they took like a tour of the South, like especially like 
educationally of like some of the plantations and Selma and stuff like that. Like that's something I would like to do as a, as someone who's half black and, and I'm not that connected in a lot of ways to my black heritage. Uh, so, uh, that would be really cool for someone like me. Uh, just, uh, I know that my ancestors were according to at least, uh, ancestry.com were, uh, slaves in Virginia, I believe is what it said. I mean, I don't know the, how accurate that is or not, but that would be where, uh, you know, some of that area would be interesting to, to tour. Uh, but I don't know that everyone would get into that. Um, state parks would be cool going to like Yellowstone, but I mean, and like Zion national park and the grand Canyon, but uh, how many of them are into the, the wilderness of it all? Uh, they already did Michigan. I just don't know what else that really, I mean, I thought that was a really smart one to do Hawaii. <laughs> I don't have a good one for domestic. I think they did a really good job covering it unless they want to do West coast, which I mean, I've had my share of that unless you want to do Catalina Island. All right, that's going to do it for segment one. We're going to continue on here in a moment. I'm done meandering on here. Uh, I just realized I just feel so good sitting upright. <laughs> I haven't had that in a week, almost a week. Looking for a delicious snack, but don't want all of the sugar and calories, and you need the best tasting protein bar ever built. You have got to try this. If you're like me, then you want to make healthier snack choices, but you don't want to compromise on taste. And I've got just the thing for you. Built Bars and, and Built Puffs. Built Bars are healthy and taste amazing. Seriously, they taste so amazing, you won't think they're good for you. And you've got to try this. I've got to tell you, I'm about to get really heavy into my Built Bar action. I found out I weigh uh, 20 pounds heavier than I did in December. <sighs> Built Bar is about to be a huge staple of my diet. I promise you that. But what makes Built Bar so good? Well, for starters, they're covered in 100% real ch dark chocolate. That's right, real chocolate. And they come in unbelievable flavors like churro, peanut butter, brownie, and cookies and cream. I'm not sure how Bilt does it, but these bars taste like a candy bar while maintaining amazing macros. What's even better is that they're healthy. Only 130 calories and 4 grams of sugar and a whopping 17 grams of protein. Now you don't have to wait to get a box. For years, we've been talking about ordering Bilt bars at Bilt.com, but now you can get them at your local Walmart or Sam's Club while you can still get your specialty flavors at Bilt.com. That's right. Head to your nearest Walmart today. Walk to the pharmacy section. Grab yourself a box of Bilt bars. You can pick up a four bar box of cookies and cream bar, double chocolate bar, or coconut puff. Or if you're close to Sam's Club, run in and grab a 13 bar box with their hit flavors, brownie batter, puff, and churro puff. You can thank me later. All right, I'm going to do something right here on the show here. I've got my, got my phone on me. This is, for, this is partially for the, the people who, um, who are all into the, the, the that get the ads right they they get the ads and what have you um on on the show and i i know i'm not making a heck of a lot of sense here but just hear me out the ad supportive version i just talked about built bar and uh let me see and zuri zuri hears that apparently we're just trying something here i put in my promo code locked15 and we are, we just ordered a box of Built Bars. Did it right here on the phone with you watching and or, and or listening. And there it goes, confirmed, shop. All right, um, <laughs> let's get back to your questions. I just wanted to do that. I haven't done that in a while. I, I put my money where my mouth is when it comes to Built Bars, like literally. And uh, so I just ordered the, uh, the limited edition cookie dough chunk puff, I mean. I talk about have to try that. I have to try that. Going to our leaders and best, Jim at Jim in the North. Why did Hayes fall in the draft? Was there a hole in his game or just bad luck? The best way I can look at it is he just wasn't like aggressive enough, maybe. I don't know. It was just like he's a stalwart. He's a guy that just seems to me like he's going to have like a 12 year NFL career at Miami. I don't, I don't really get it, but like, I just maybe like, he doesn't come across as being a guy that has a mean streak. So I think it's really bizarre that he went in the seventh round, almost didn't go. Uh, I, I couldn't find it, but I was pretty sure I remember seeing a mock draft with him in the first round two years ago. I couldn't find it though, but I didn't look that hard. So I don't really know. How badly is MSU hurt by the portal departures? Would have been really hurt if uh, Charles Brantley stayed in the portal, but I mean, you lose your top receiver and your quarterback. I mean, that's that's not good. 
it, they're, they're probably a little less hurt by it being this year or, or this time of year. But one of the things that made me think MSU had an opportunity this year was that they had at least a guy who has started a lot of games and had a really good receiver to throw to. Now we're talking their, their top duo is Noah Kim to uh, Trey Mosley. Now they've still got some talent. They got that defensive end I, to ton me say out of, I don't know how to say his name. I'm not going to try it beyond that from Texas A&M, the former five star. They've got a couple guys in the transfer portal that are pretty good. I mean, they're going to have to be really good to overcome what they just lost because they already lost guys to the draft. They lost guys to the transfer portal. They just lost more that they really couldn't afford to. I just, I, I, but you know, you never know with that team. MSU, it seems like whenever you think they're going to be really bad, they end up being weirdly good. So you never know. Switching to Star Wars. And by the way, I'm sorry I missed the May the 4th be with you. May the 4th be with you. And also May the 5th. <laughs> uh, may, may the Sith, maybe? May the Sith be with you. Um, will we see the Mythosaur again in The Mandalorian? I didn't understand why we didn't. I thought that was a really weird tease. Like, I felt like they were setting up uh, for us to really, that to be like a major storyline. And it kind of wasn't, except for... And this is a spoiler. We're doing the full spoiler alert here. So plug your ears, earmuffs for those who haven't watched season three. Listen, this was like from episode two. So if you haven't seen it, you're just behind at this point. But I, with it being just like Bo-Katan Bo Bo being like, I saw it. I just didn't think that that was much. You know, felt like there was going to be something more to it. There wasn't. Perry Mitchell at Perry Mitchell 08. What Michigan player goes first in the 2024 draft? Uh, there, I mean, there's some mock drafts out there. That have JJ or Chris Jenkins. Um, I think it could be either of those guys. Uh, I, I wouldn't also be surprised if it was either Blake or Donovan. It's way too early to be able to tell beyond that. Uh, he says, I think it could be McGregor if he reaches the ceiling or the Don if he stays healthy. I think that's also accurate. You never know, right? Like at this time last year, I don't know that anyone was saying it was going to be Mozzie, but maybe they were. That Mozzie was going to be a first round pick. Um, two years ago, no one was saying that about Mozzie. So you just kind of never know. Uh, Mark Z at Mark Zimke. I thought of this when you were comparing you over your stats for Brad Robbins. Is there additional context for punting statistics? For example, his average may be lower, but due to field position, he may have only needed to punt 30 to 35 yards to pin at the 10. I don't recall a ton of times where he needed to punt it as far as possible. That's true. And hang time is what the Bengals really liked uh, about him, right? So that's probably the big thing is being able to have like really good hang time. Uh, and, uh, and also directionally punt. Cause remember he can do that. Not everyone can do that. And especially in college football, college football, it's a lot of the rugby punt, which isn't directional. It's just about rolling out and it's like, Oh, is it a fake? Oh, it's not, you know? So, uh, James Kovalevsky at coach underscore Kovo. Naturally, it's hard to see some, uh, of our football favorites go out into the transfer portal, but overall, do you feel like we're getting a net positive in the portal guys that are leaving opening spots? Uh, for even more talented players. I do think that's the case. I mean, they brought in nine guys so far in the transfer portal. They lost probably about that, right? They lost uh, Taylor Upshaw, just committed to Arizona uh, after committing initially to uh, Colorado. They lost, uh, we've already talked about Nakai, RJ Moten, AJ Henning. Um, who else did they lose to the portal? Yabi Oki. And I feel like there's more out there that I'm missing. Nonetheless, I mean, you got you, you did you got better on on the return. You got four guys who were team captains, which I think is a weirdly big thing. Uh, you've got so um, you got the team captains. You got and and all of them are basically out of the the nine, I would say seven of them are going to play meaningful minutes. It would be kind of a disaster if Jack Tuttle's playing meaningful minutes. I don't think Hudson Hollenbeck, who committed yesterday. Uh, the kicker from uh, Mississippi State. I, I mean, he's going to be in a battle with James Turner. I think James Turner is probably the likely winner of being that place kicker. Or they could always have it be like it was in 2016 initially where Moody was doing kickoffs and Quinn Nordine was doing field goals until Quinn was injured. And then we saw Jake Moody take the field goals uh, the last couple games of the year. Uh, so, I mean, there's different things that they can do as far as uh, utilizing those guys, but everyone else will play. So I think that's a really big thing. And that is a net positive. I mean, you've got a couple guys that are essentially starters or if they're not starters, they're, they're one B to one a Ernest Hausman, uh, AJ Barner, 
Uh, Ladarius Henderson is, is a starter, almost certainly. Uh, Drake Nugent, I think, is a pretty good position to do so. And then we'll find out about uh, Miles Hinton. So it's pretty good. Uh, Spencer Whitmore and Spencer Whitmore. If you think about it, Mel Tucker has had one winning season in his head coaching career. This could be a long eight more years for them. He won't last eight more years if he doesn't have another winning season. And he could get there this year. I know we all like to be down on them and and everything, but there's still talent in East Lansing. It's just less than I think even they expect. I do think this is disastrous for them, but it, it kind of sometimes seems like Michigan State ends up doing well when you least expect them to. No one expected them to do as well as they did in, in 2021, but that's due to Kenneth Walker. Maybe they found something, someone like that, or will find someone like that in the portal. Who knows? But yeah, it's uh, like I said before: five and seven, two and four, eleven and two, or whatever it was, and then uh, five and seven again. Not, not exactly uh, earning that contract. But he's got two wins against Michigan. Ike Hamlin at Hamstand 87, being on the sidelines for games, you've ever felt a close call with players running out of bounds. I was sitting in the Michigan section at Iowa and someone got smoked by Corum. Yes, often. <laughs> the worst, the scariest one for me was against UCF in 2016. Because here's the other thing. I have a long lens pressed to my face, which distorts how close or how far someone is. Uh, and uh, it was one of those things where it's like, oh, I better get out of the way. And then... But I step sidestep and Mo, Mo Hurst tackles a guy what, of what would have been into me. It was pretty bad. I had a I had a lot of close calls. Um, there was a couple in from the twenty uh, nineteen Wisconsin game. No, not twenty nineteen. Twenty yeah, twenty nineteen Wisconsin. The 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 road loss at, at in Madison. There were two times where that some people got it on video because it was on TV where I kind of sidestep things. Uh, there have been some times where I've stood in there, uh, 2015 against uh, Rutgers. Uh, I stood in there to get the shot of uh, a Jabril Peppers touchdown. One of my favorite pictures is Jake Butt, like, over Jabril. Uh, it was my uh, Twitter header for, I think, about three years. Uh, that And it might be the, well, I think I just changed the Twitter header on Wolverine's Wire, but it was the Twitter header there for three years as well. Um... This, so there have been times where I've stood in there. There's been times I've gotten out of the way. I've seen people injured. Uh, it's it's you gotta keep your head on a swivel. I had a couple times in the 2021 Maryland game where it got a little hairy, but yeah, you gotta keep your head on a swivel. And sometimes it's harder because you're not looking at it from your traditional perspective. You're looking at it from uh, you're looking basically at the middle of the field and you just see blurs and you just have to have to feel that it's coming at you, essentially. Uh. Anton says me to Mangala. Asks me to Mangala. I'm glad the thread is working again. Can you use my question I sent you last week? I see. Here's the thing. I didn't copy that over, and I, it's hard to find. So you're just gonna have to repost it. So I'm gonna do your also. Sorry. Also, do you think the prospect of big time games to start the season in 2024 and 25 are an added bonus for recruiting? I think absolutely. Uh, because you can sit there and, and be like, Hey, I haven't wanted to play against Texas and never want to play at Oklahoma. And you know, if we, you know, especially if 2023 works out well, but I don't think it's going to be the major selling point, but it can be a part of a selling point. I'm sorry. Just resend me that question. Cause I tweet way too much to be able to look at, look for that in a relatively easy fashion. Urban buyer to 20 roar pros and cons of pursuing a second QB in the 2024 class. Um, I, I don't really know that they need one. I mean, you've got Jaden Davis. What, why do you need another one? Unless you're looking for a guy that's a completely different change of pace and can maybe play a different position, kind of like uh, Alex Orgy or uh, Jaden Denegal. You could flex Denegal to tight end. Orgy could certainly play fullback, running back, be a wildcat, all that kind of stuff. So uh, the, the, that, that's the pros. The cons are you, you get Jaden Davis to not feel secure in his position and go somewhere else. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think they're going to get a second quarterback in the class, to be honest. Uh, Clark at Blue for Life 8. Who would you have considered the class clown of last year's team? Hmm. This is our final question of segment two. Class clown of the last year's team. I don't know. Everyone's so serious. 
even the guys that were like kind of silly before, like Mike Sainer still are like really serious now. I maybe Chris Jenkins just because he's like crazy smiley. I feel like the offensive linemen joke around a bit. Like I've I've had some had some fun moments uh, before games with Trevor Keegan. I mean JJ is kind of silly. None of the wide receivers seem that silly, at all. Neither, well, you know who it is. It's Donovan Edwards. It's easily Donovan Edwards. I don't even know why it took me that long. Donovan's the guy who he he's if he sees there's a press conference going on, he's out in the back there screaming and yelling stuff and being silly. It's Donovan Edwards. It's <laughs> just like sometimes I look at his face and I'm like, that is a silly dude. I don't know why it took me that long. All right, we're going to continue on. We got a couple more questions coming up here in just a moment. All right, finishing us out, Data Guy Florida or FL at Data Guy FL. Sometimes we put him up in the top group. Uh, just to kind of have a little bit more balance, I put him in the final one here. Do you think CJ Stroud was a better QB than JJ in 2022? I mean, objectively, yes. Did he win as many games? No, but as far as being an overall quarterback, yes. CJ Stroud was a better quarterback than JJ. Do you think the score in Columbus would have changed significantly if the teams had swapped quarterbacks? No, I don't. <laughs> That's I don't think it was I don't think that a quarterback necessarily won or lost that game. Although I, I think I don't know, JJ made the big plays in that game that CJ didn't. But I think overall CJ had the better year than JJ. I don't think that's really necessarily up for debate. I'm not the one at William Cawthor nine. If JJ stays an Underwood commits, do you think Davis bolts? No, I don't like, I, I don't think that I think they're, they're letting people know like there's going to be competition and listen, where else is he going to go to Georgia, to Ohio state, to Clemson, where there's like already other guys entrenched. I mean, Ohio state doesn't have, well, they do have their quarterback, Aaron Nolan. No, I, I don't think that. I think that it's, He'll get to campus, and if, say, he gets buried on the depth chart, then he bolts. That's how it works now. Can you tell your prediction for the season, and you think that? And I think they're going to go, I'll at least give you the uh, the regular season, and I think they'll go 13-0. and I think they'll, they'll run the table again and do exactly what they did last year. Beyond that, I don't know. I, I, it's hard to even predict the, the 13th game because you don't know if, like, is Iowa markedly better with Cade? Eric All and uh, Caleb Brown, maybe, maybe not. Does Wisconsin come on? Does does whoever give Michigan a game if Michigan gets back? I still think Michigan will will run the table. I just think they're better than everyone. The only team that they aren't more talented than is Ohio State, and Ohio State has big, big questions. Dan Ely at D248. Why am I not hearing anything about Cole Cabana? Because he, I believe, is injured and has not been doing anything in the spring. So doesn't sound like he is probably going to be a part of the season, but uh, I could be wrong. I, I kind of just heard that and never got confirmation on it. Roger Salomon at R solo 901 is Caleb Love potentially not coming to Michigan now seeing rumors of it. Also, who else is Juwan looking at to fill the current open spots? I don't know about the latter. And I, uh, the, if I would have answered this at the right time yesterday, uh, I would have not known what you were talking about. Now I do. And it, he reaffirmed his commitment to Michigan on Twitter. Doesn't sound like he's going anywhere. Uh, Joshua Carlson at Josh WFF 96. Look, we have up to 15 plus guys that may be drafted next year. Not to look too far ahead, but is it reasonable to think that 2024 will be a down year? Assuming JJ leaves Ex- expected attrition happens. What is your way too early prediction for 2024? I think it's uh, it's certainly possible, if not plausible about all of the above JJ leaving might not be. I still just feel in my gut without him having said a word to me that he just feels like a guy that would stick around for a senior year, just because it just seems like that's what he would do knowing him. Um, if he does leave, I think that it will be like a, probably more of a nine and three season. Cause likely Ohio state and Penn state will have returning quarterbacks. Uh, and then you have to face Texas with a five star. Granted, it's at home, so that kind of helps. Um, and they might lose some more, you know, some more guys before then. I think it just depends on who leaves. I mean, there's some guys that can't, you know, like Will Johnson ain't going nowhere. Uh, Mason Graham, Kenneth Grant ain't going nowhere. You've got up and coming guys like Derek Moore. 
And it just kind of depends on how young, how quick that younger class can go. But right now, I'd say it'll be a nine and three, ten and two type season for Michigan in twenty twenty four if your scenario plays out. Finishing us out, Ben Ricketts. That Ricketts Ben ninety two. Which Michigan drafted player will have the best rookie season, and which player will have the best NFL career? Uh, Jake Moody will have the best NFL career. I know that sounds like a cop out, but I think he'll be like a fifteen year guy in the NFL and just be known as one of the most incredible kickers in the NFL over that time period. Uh, as far as the, the best rookie season, um, I, I can see it being Mozzie. You know what? No, it's probably Luke. Probably Luke Schoonmaker, because I just think that he, he's exactly the type of guy that Dallas is just going to utilize so heavily. Could be Mozzie, though, because he's gonna got a lot of help around him as well. All right, that's going to do it for us today. We are going to continue on over the weekend. I don't have anything necessarily planned, but there's a lot of news we kind of missed, so we'll get to all of that stuff then. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. My apologies for being stupid and hurting my back and missing shows, but uh, we'll be back over the weekend to make up for it. So thank you. We'll talk to you then. Peace. Peace.